The federal government has declared the two-week strike being undertaken by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, as illegal. This was stated by the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngege, who also said the announcement of the strike came as a shock to him. He said the union did not follow due process and accused the union of resorting to corruption to make the teachers go on strike. And joining me still to discuss this in the studio is Leonard Ebute, a political analyst. I, I want your swift reaction to the comments credited to the minister, um, Chris Ngege. I think he was, um, I think he was hasty in many sense. Uh, we do. We respect to him. I respect him a lot. I, I, I respect what he did as governor, particularly. But there is a lot of maturity lacking in the comments um, credited to him. Yes. Reason being that um, this is a labor dispute, and you never want to start labor dispute as the leader of the other side on an aggressive footing. It's poor procurement practice, poor negotiation tactics to start. We, from zero, you just jump to 100, you know. So that frontal attack against the ASU folks was unnecessary. Uh, I felt that the, the, the reaction of the House of Rep to the issue was more mature, more deliberate, more composed. But to jump from uh, the on strike to it's illegal, it's name calling, you're not a court of law to declare actions illegal to be Now, I mean, he, said, he said the reason why it, it, it came off to him as illegal and as, as shocking was because that the minister said um, that the, the last discussion the federal government had with us was that the union should nominate a person to serve on the EP's committee. Hmm. So if this was their last discussion, then one want to ask, then why did the union embark on this two-week warning strike? You see, the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has lost the right to be trusted, to seek for trust, particularly on labor issues. ASU has been deceived myriads of times. Agreements that have been reached with this government yes. on many issues for which strikes have happened. The government has, in many ways, not met its part. They have no reason to lay claim, no moral grounds, for thinking they may have been consulted a bit better. That is not to say that I sanction the behavior of ASU. I am never going to be on the side of ASU as far as strike is concerned. But that is not the issue here. The issue here is that I feel that anybody on the government side yes. does not have the moral standing to speak as Ngege has spoken, even though I will always disagree with ASU on issues relating to strike because of the greater good associated with the work they do. Yes. Now, this is it. Um, I need your thoughts on the government's decision to stop salaries, especially February salaries of, of, of uh, members in this union of lecturers who have not registered on the salary payment platform known as EPIS. Mm. Yes, I, I mean, I, it's clear. If we have decided that this is the platform on which your salary would be paid and you remain a staff of the government, those are administrative issues. You shouldn't have a choice. But you, they you cannot seem to be against this. I mean, do you dictate to your employer how the modality and way you should be paid? Exactly. So that, that again is suspicious. How do you want to tell your employer? The, the, the contract is simple. You work for me and then I pay you. How I pay you is my business, right? So if I have said this is the platform through which you must be paid and you have not complied, of course you won't get your salary. Those of us that are in private sector practice, we understand these kind of things. You, you, you can't be monkeying with a system that favors you, maybe, maybe from a process, a governance point of view, not the best. Your employer is introducing something that from their own posturing represents uh, more visibility, more control. And then the fact that you're refusing to comply makes your behavior suspicious. Yes, I was just going to say that because mm -hmm. ASO seemed to be opposed to, to this. Did you, um, because this would check, this would put a check on ghost workers and mm -hmm. all those people they pay mm -hmm. that don't necessarily exist. Mm -hmm. Now, why would you think ASO would be against this? Is there something yeah, they are I, really not saying to us? There are things. I read some comments around you know, people who are on sabbatical, yes. they get salaries on both sides and all of that. Now, and you know, on the on the IP system, you cannot take double salaries and all. But then the distinction between salary and other remunerations. Yes is possible on IPs. Example was given of how doctors take their allowances as clinical staff and also as lecturers on the same platform. So there is a clear process, a clear system process around how that could have been achieved without the impasse. So the fact that a section of ASU is at war 
with this process that we give visibility, yes. give governance to this, is, is really, really suspicious. And it's disgraceful, by the way, because the, 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 the academic environment is supposed to, be, to lead innovation. Yes. So to begin to fight innovation is in itself disgraceful. And to think again, I mean, I, I'm not holding brief for the federal government. They also did say in their last discussion that the union should, they're going to have representatives who will be in charge um, to serve on the EP's committee. Hmm. And so ASU's, many people have, have regarded ASU's um, disposition in all this matter as unfair at the moment to the federal government. That's, do you, do you un that's, that? that's unusual generosity from the federal government. Why do I want to care whether you have a representative on the platform where I pay you? Yes provided your salary is complete. It's almost as if ASU here is confused about their role in the relationship. Let me explain to you, ASU. So you are the staff. The federal government is the employer. employer. You work, and then he pays you in Naira. Provided that is happening, and you are getting your full remuneration, you should please just shut up and go teach our kids. The fact that they have abandoned class for this is really a reflection of a greater sense of loss of national pride and loss of dignity in the labor and service that they offer to the Nigerian um, um, students in school. And I think students should look at their lecturers with a different eye and suspect their motives for coming to class. If because you cannot comply with an administrative policy, you would skip class. And the government is well within its right on this issue to say if you don't work as a result of this class, you shouldn't be paid because the legitimacy of the exercise is seriously questionable. Yes. Now, um, the government's failure to meet the teachers' expectations within the context of the agreement has been a primary reason ASU has been on strike almost every year since 1999. Absolutely. What is the permanent solution to all of these perpetual strikes? You see, the government or governments, successive governments, have been lying governments. That's, uh, they've squandered their currency, their trust currency over the years. And if that were all it was that brought ASU to this point again, we would have said it's another cycle. But that it is tied to something as mundane as a process that they should have ordinarily complied with has sort of taken away the bite from this particular issue now. I do not think that ASU is here. I think, I, I, I think that ASU is using the excuse of IPs to reopen an old wound that has first started over the yes, years. Yes, you're right. They did say that yes. um, they're, they're not just protesting. It's not. It's beyond the the, the IP's issue. Mm. They, they, they complain about poor funding, um, the proliferation of state universities, and non-implementation of previous agreements uh -huh. with the federal government. Non-implementation mm. of previous agreements aside, I agree 100%. Yes. Is it a basis for strike? Maybe yes, maybe no. But what do you mean by proliferation of state universities? Mm. You're not funded from the same source. We don't have enough one universities. Is federal and one is state. We don't even with federal, state, and private universities together, hundreds of thousands of people that qualify to go to university still cannot get it get into school. We don't have enough universities. Why is ASU feeling threatened? So you don't you don't agree that we have a, a proliferation of um, of universities? State we don't have enough. I think ASU here is trying to monopolize their trade you know, so that their position as ASU becomes unfairly untenable. You know, they, they want to create a cartel here, a monopolistic cartel, so that they can enhance their bargaining power. And that is at the expense of educating the Nigerian people who, by the way, are qualified to be in school. Mm -hmm. It is an unfair comment, and it is a shameful comment, really. Because if people pass jam, meet the cutoff marks, and you have to do post jam to screen out the people who have already passed jam, and then you are angry that states are trying to ameliorate that problem, trying to get their kids to, to be in school, that's ridiculously petty. How do we get to Uhuru from where we are? The federal government asks, what is the solution? See, the Nigerian strategy towards education right now is flawed. The world has moved away from where we are long ago. Mm -hmm. Everybody that wants to go to school, and I use the word deliberately, wants to go to, go to school, not qualify, yeah. wants it's a to choice, go to school, should be in school. The world has moved away from people qualifying to be in school. The world has gone to a point where school 
is a desire. Should, you should be educated because you desire to be educated. And that will remove the monopoly of some of these organizations. The private sector has stepped up. Unfortunately, private sector education is still uh, expensive and all. So the Nigerian strategy for education, right? We should look at Nigeria 10 years from now and see what are the skills that we need. The kind of education that got us here it's not the kind that is going to get us to the next 10 years. The world has realized that and is changing, but Nigeria has remained in the education we inherited before independence. And that has to change. The way education is funded has moved long ago. Schools like Harvard are funded essentially by the Alumni Association. Lagos Business School is towing the same lines. But here we are today, where entire universities with innovation, with professors that have contributed in real terms, are living on a government that is broke, too broke to meet their needs. I think uh, we should, they should learn to monetize their research. They should learn to, 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 to partner with companies to bring their research to reality and live on, on, on royalties and all. That's how universities and research centers all over the world are, are, are functioning. They are addressing real human issues and then using that to access funding in terms of grants and with multilateral, multilateral and donor agencies. Political so, analyst Leonard Abute, thank you very much for joining us on Plus Politics and for your insightful contribution. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus report, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. The Nigerian police force has paraded 108 suspected criminals in Abuja. The police force public relations officer, Frank Mba, while reiterating the resolve of the police to curb crime nationwide, said the arrests were made in collaboration with the police special tax squad and the inspector general of police intelligence response team. Mba said the suspects were arrested for various crimes ranging from armed robbery, kidnapping, gun running, weapons fabrication, drug peddling, among others. If you follow the trajectory or the trend and patterns of our operation in recent times, you will see that our operatives and investigators are paying particular attention to persons or criminal elements who act as enablers and facilitators of the major criminals in this very complex web of kidnapping, banditry, and terror enterprise. And so we are committed to cutting off the arms supply chain disrupting them, recovering weapons, mopping up these weapons, and bringing the illicit traders on these weapons to book. We are also determined to cut down the supply of drugs like cocaine, tramadol, and other forms of banned substances uh, we, we're committed to stopping their flow to the camp of these criminals in order also to weaken their, 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 their capacity. And here is my take. The news of the dethroned Amy of Kano, Mohammed Lamido Sanusi II, being detained and heavily guarded by security operatives immensely shocks me. I wonder what did this man do? What is his crime? criticizing the government and trying to change northern Nigeria. While I recognize that Sanusi, like every other human being, is not a saint, I don't think he deserves this treatment. I urge the government, whatever government is holding him, to release him. And as we get the ASU strike and the federal government saying the announcement is shocking, I can only wonder why Ngege will make that statement. You made promises and even signed agreements with the union, and for years you didn't make good on them, and then you the strike and suddenly you were shocked. And for Asu, why are you just speaking out? Why wait till now? I urge the federal government to make good on their promises and do what they're supposed to do. And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. We'll be back tomorrow, same time. Until then, be well.